Okay, so we've been talking through, and we're halfway through, or two-thirds through, the process of undoing the flesh in us. And what's the flesh? The flesh is the part of us that doesn't know the love of God. Where did the flesh come from? We've detailed that from Adam being alone, tracking forward. Jesus dealt with the flesh by taking on a body with as much darkness in it as anyone, going to the bottom of it. He conquered his flesh before he died. And then he dealt with the spiritual context of that and everything after he, after he died. And he's in us now sharing what he has with us. What does he have with us? The love of the Father. That the love of the Father may be in you as I'm in you. So as he comes up, is he an instamatic, you know, wipe you out, start again? No, he works with you. You are, you are not to be erased. What you worked with, all right? So we've just been saying how fear is removed and then your mess starts coming back. And we were just saying that as you're doing that, people may begin accusing you. And as, you, as you're sort of going through the healing board, it's a bit like snakes and ladders. You know, you climb up a bit, then the snake hits and you slide down. Well, the accuser is a snake. And it is like snakes and ladders. You do slip down and you start again. All right? And that's, that's what happens, and it's okay. There's, there's no hurry. You do it at your own place with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, she cares for you and mothers you and will sort you through and hold you, and you're different to me, and everybody needs something different. There's no rules. Are there any rules on raising kids? No. Apart from loving them, and it's, therefore it comes out different. Someone said they've tried the rules, but was that in your marriage or your... You're raising your kids. For the, video, for the video, I've got two people over there, both with some <laughs> facial things, and, and I'm wondering if they're in a... Hit on my nose? Yeah, well, one's got a hit on the nose and one's got a hit up here, and I'm wondering if there's cage fighting at home. I'm, not, I'm just not sure what's going on. And those people's relationship to you are just... Yeah, it's quite interesting. Now, so as we... You might notice there's no defences now, and the, the OK and the bad is gone, or the good and the bad is gone. So your conscience dropped where you're no longer deciding you're good and bad because you're not in the position to decide whether you're good or bad because Jesus says you're wrong about sin, you're wrong about righteousness, you're wrong about judgment. The morality, the morality we apply to ourselves is a pile of rubbish, right? Jesus' method is, you're my daughter, you're my son, you're my daughter, you're my son. And when you go, yes, I am, you go, oh, good, now, now we've got some engagement. Let me love you. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, I can. Yes, oh, good, we've got more engagement. You, you with me? And we've got, no, 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 I'm going to measure myself and justify myself by the thing that Satan stuck into me, which creates death. Remember we said this will be redeemed, but only through death. Right? In the end, it, this will be serving are you walking in love, Bruce? Are you walking in life, Bruce? That's the, that's the measure, not morality. So, past pain, the, the barriers have dropped. There is nothing stopping anything coming back. Oh my goodness, hang on for the ride. I thought I was healed. I thought it was all better. I've dealt with all that stuff from this and that, and now I've got this other thing coming up. Got a friend called Kaz who's written a book on inner healing, and she more or less documents that that when you get to a certain point, it just more comes up. Yeah. It's not an end game; it's a process. And does it matter whether it's still there or not? Who's again? Are you judging yourself? And I was chatting <laughs> chatting with her yesterday because Kaz has been in the gospel for a long time and Michael Lafleur put up a video and during the video the concept of the relentless love of God got to one part of her Kaz knows that backwards and the rest of her but one part came up and I said Kaz isn't it a delight to find one of these parts as you get older it is a delight because they're hard to find you don't push away. Cass has got arms around this part of herself. Off we go, right? But to find deep hurt parts is harder as you get older. So good to be able to do it. So they come back. 
Now look what's happening. Emotions, needs, values, experiences, and intuition are starting to pop back across the divide. Oh, you're becoming a human. The robot's gone. The religious plastic fantastic with the smile and no feeling is no longer there. You've got a being who laughs and cries, gets angry and upset, and is human. Oh my goodness. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 says, Behold, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one God. Two gods are one. We discover when we discover the Holy Spirit, three gods are one. Jesus says, I and my Father are one, then he's one with the Spirit. Psalm 110, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. We, we discover there's oneness occurring. Now, Greek philosophy pulls things apart, kabang, as does the conscience. As we start healing, we start becoming one. The beginning of oneness in us. And, and, now, just take this down and have a think about it. Everything of Father, Son and Spirit leads to integration and oneness. Okay? Everything of Father, Son and Spirit leads to integration and oneness. And everything of darkness leads to splitting and dissociation and fragmentation. Okay? And that's about the human soul. Right? That's how it works. So, as the Gospel comes in, Oh, look, there's a funny little verse in Romans. The gospel is the power of God to salvation. Salvation being healing. Oneness. I don't like myself. I don't want my bits to come back. I don't... Yeah, well, that happens while I've still got too much of this operating. As that, and this is why it's recursive. You know how we talk about it? It's not in a straight line. You get to a certain point, you can't cope with it. You do a bit of a snake down the, down the snake on the snakes and ladders. This thing gets smudged out a bit more and then it keeps going. It rarely goes in a straight line. We'll go with what's constant for that person. So this is a very deep, sacred process because you are unique, your bits are unique, your parts are unique, you're sacred, you're a being and it's starting to come home. And it's hard to accept yourself. And that's okay. And if you can manage it and hold it, you get through it. If this re-emerges, you slide down the snake and you start again. And then you get smudged out a bit. And you can manage more. Now, as the healing progresses, you become increasingly aware of your emotions. Now, between that slide and this one, there's a little box gone on the right. One, two, three, four. And we'll be going through that in detail. Remember, this is an overview at 70 miles and we'll be drilling into it. What's the one, two, three, four? When I've got pain in me and I, I don't know what to do with it, um, I need a, an eraser for the whiteboard. Got it here. Um, when I've got pain in me, I've got a number of options and not very complicated. I can take that pain and try and manage it in different ways. So, what could I do? Yeah. Somebody just said numb. I can, I'll put, write that down. I can numb the pain or suppress it. Would that be a good idea? Yep, yeah, we humans, this is what we do as humans. And it's not very complicated. And the next one is I can give myself comfort. And this could be in my body, 
or in my mind. How hard is that? Not very hard is it? So let's say I've got problems, deep pain, and I want to comfort myself. I could use in my body, I could use food. Uh-huh. I could use drugs. But drugs can also work at numbing things, so I can put drugs down there. And so can food. I could use sex. I could use audiovisual. I could use fantasy. And a whole bunch of those things we've listed there can go into there. And I can give myself comfort. And if you look at your behaviour, it's, it's really quite interesting to, if you can watch yourself, that when you're having a hard time, if you can stay present, you'll notice you flip into either suppressing or giving yourself comfort. But just watch it. Just, and again, make sure you don't judge yourself. No morality. Just watch, watch your patterns and get to know yourself and have a laugh at yourself. Right? It, it is, because it's not, the more you switch that in, the more it gets worse. This is what we said in the gospel section in Romans 7. Paul says, the more you preach the law, the worse things get. Now you can see what we're saying. Because this is the flesh. What the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son into the flesh to fix things up. Romans 8 verse 4. All right? So numbness, drugs, people who sit at the pokies. You ask them, you know, you don't judge them. Just say, why do you do it? Oh, just don't feel anything. So good. Yeah, drugs, maybe TV, maybe um, pokies. Do you want to explain what that is? Because I didn't know until I arrived. Okay, pokies for the international audience is Australia's national addiction to gambling. It's called the poker machines. And Australians have a habit of creating nicknames for most things, so the poker machines are called the pokies. So that's what we do. Now, uh, and now over here you can have dissociation. You can split, totally split. And it's just a response to pain. Okay, that's pretty heavy stuff, isn't it? So again, let's pray. Holy Spirit, as we wander through our souls and our defences are getting slowly spotlit, we ask that, Jesus, you've come into us and we didn't put you there. Jesus, the love you bring from Dad who loves us more than we can know. Holy Spirit, please take this love and hold our parts and hold our being. And may we know your hugs and your cuddles and your affection and your kisses and your, your caresses and everything you give to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Can this become a fun adventure rather than after a while, rather than something to... Right, so it's a very good question from Jackie. This whole process, once you start doing it, can it become an adventure? Just like Kaz. Kaz saying, got one! <laughs> yes! Pokemon, you can find it. You do not like, yeah, yeah, like, once you're more, uh, I shouldn't, but Kaz has been in this discussion for years, so she's done lots of healing, and so she's not scared of it. There's no fear. But, yeah, it's so good! I didn't know this was there and I'll, I'll change as a consequence. And when it does, a whole bunch of things I didn't know are gone. Mm. So yes, freedom. freedom and an adventure. Spot on. Spot on. Exactly right. And that's how you feel, isn't it? Yeah. Well, good. Got two out of two. <laughs> okay. Detail coming from the back, which was saying... Um, we don't have to deal with everything. No, we don't. And, and we, we'll cover that. We're doing a 70-mile view, but yeah, just for those who are getting worried about having to come back to everything, there will be anchor points in your soul on, and there'll be like a bunch of kites coming or a, a, you know, a hundred balloons tethered to this one anchor point. You don't have to go through every balloon. Right? 
And what happens is that just this one comes up and as it was said from the back, a whole, whole bunch of things, domino effect, a whole bunch of things are gone. Yeah, you didn't deal with those balloons, but the anchor point's gone. Our friend Baxter talks about the beaver dam, getting to the biggest log in the bottom of the beaver dam. Yeah, Kr Kruger talks about the beaver dam and he talks about the lie of separation from God, which was the, you know, God and the world right back. And you pull that out and then the cascade starts. Yep. Bruce, I found too what you said about observing ourselves without judging to be very helpful because, yeah, I, it is a pain. You know, healing is it's not easy. It involves pain, but I, I realise it, it can be a lot more painful if, if we so, allow that thing to run. So yeah. observing yourself yeah. without judging and just yeah. having a laugh at yourself or with yourself, yeah, yeah. 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 helpful, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I hadn't been realising that yeah, I've become my own worst enemy often, you know, and it's sort of... Have you got a conscience? <laughs> <laughs> you got a woodpecker. Oh, a little yeah. woodpecker in the brain. Yeah, but it's making it more complicated as well. It always does. Yeah. It always does. And that's why mates are so good in the story, Bruce. Yeah, um, yeah. And people who can give, give you... Don't take this the wrong way for the camera. People who can give you shit are great. Yeah. People who can pay you out are great. They can have a laugh with you, accept you, and hold you while you're full to bits. Now... Look at what's happening there. I see the bottom one, intuition emerging. You get feelings. And you realise that you didn't even know how to make decisions based on intuition. Everything was good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. Where's my intuition gone? Oh dear. And then I have to work out what's my intuition and what's my mind. You know, it's, it's a growth. Now, the oneness is growing, and you might notice that good and bad's gone, and you might notice that the number of blue dissociative things is dropping, the little islands are dropping, and you might notice that we've now also dealt with the one, two, three, four on that bottom right. So the pain management, the pain management processes you've begun to take responsibility for your life. So instead of you having pain and not looking at it and just doing stuff, you've learnt to come back and look at your pain. And you do it and you gradually you do less and less. And it's, again, it's not moral. It's not good, bad. It's not stop it. Someone's laughing because they've seen a a YouTube video of counselling with stop it. <laughs> or I'll bury you six foot underground in a coffin. Yeah, that one. Um, it's not stop it, right? It's, it's actually, it's emotionally based and you being able to face your pain. And then, then it comes down further. But you're remaining embodied. You got rid of your one, two, three, four. And, um, and you, you've probably begun to face your addictions. Addictions are a means of managing pain. And there are addictions which are chemical addictions. You know, you, you can set about it and you can be trapped chemically in it, which is, again, that's not pain-driven, and that's body-driven, that's chemical-driven. Now we're getting some good ways around those now. Now, you've got what's gone between the last diagram. Just come back. What's that? Sp 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 spin. What's the spin? And we'll cover this in more detail, but spin is our problem solving approach to life. And it's part of having a brain. And if you've got a problem, your if you've got a, an issue, a problem to work through, which is, I'll just make it that thing, your brain will try different options and doors in the brain. You'll try different options and you get stuck and you work your way around and you come back again. And if you think about, if I say, I want you to um, arrange a party next week um, in this place, well, you say, well, we need location and your, your brain tries all sorts of options. Now, when you're doing this over a problem and you can't get through, you go around, you go around, and then eventually you're doing this. 
you're spinning. This can happen over yourself. What am I going to do about my behaviour? What am I going to be doing about this? What am I going to do about... And you do this spinning which starts spiralling down. And it's sort of mentioned in the Psalms about the whirlwind. Round and round, goes faster and faster and becomes painful after a while. Becomes painful. So, as you face, as you face the capacity to face issues and pain, and some issues can't be faced and fixed, they need to be grieved. Okay? So, with both managing issues by comfort in and out of the body and facing situations, you develop the capacity to grieve. And Jesus was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. It's just so normal. We learn to grieve. And we don't get trapped in the grief. Have you noticed how some people cry? <laughs> like that, you know, they, 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 they cry. They cry and they, they get stuck in the throat. Have you ever you've seen people cry and they're jerking? And, and have you seen people cry without that? They're sitting there crying, the tears just flying. The, the shuddering and crying is us not able to process what's going on and what's happening is still flying. And some people let stuff out seamlessly just crying. You with me? Mm. But they don't have the jerking going, the freeze response kicking in. So there we are there. What we'll do is we'll have another session in a little while.